Today on the show, we're going to be talking about Stephanie Brown. If you didn't know that she was only ever supposed to be a part of her original story and nothing else, then this show is for you. So, Stephanie Brown, the fourth Robin, the third Batgirl, and the only spoiler. She would first appear in Detective Comics issue 647 in 1992. Before we get into the actual history of Stephanie Brown, there are some facts that you need to know about her first. The first being that she has a large fan base. She has a really big fan base because if you don't love Stephanie Brown, you like her. You just can't hate her. Another fun fact is that she's one of the most prominent feminist figures in the Bat family and is the only female in the mainstream DC universe to have become Robin. Now, a number of fans of DC Comics, including myself if I'm honest, think that Dan DiDio is the only person in the world that has a problem with Stephanie Brown. First off, he made it so when she died, her Robin costume wasn't displayed in the Batcave like Jason Todd's, which is obviously a huge insult to everyone that loved her character. When fans asked why her Robin costume was never displayed, he said it was because she was never really Robin. Second off, when the New 52 came about, Stephanie was originally erased from existence and fans were outraged. Thousands of petitions were sent to DC Comics to get Stephanie Brown back into the continuity and DiDio's only response to this was, well I don't think the Stephanie Brown fandom is as strong as it seems. Obviously this statement caused a lot of controversy and anger and it's one of the main reasons that people that tend to focus on Bat Family comics don't really want DiDio in his position anymore. I do just want to make clear that that is not the only reason. There is a plethora of things that he's done that's really upset a lot of people. So, Stephanie Brown, daughter of Clue Master, one of Gotham's villains, but he wasn't exactly a great villain. He spent most of Stephanie's childhood in prison, meaning he got caught. Eventually, he would return to Stephanie's family and would be all like, yeah, I'm cool now, I don't do crime anymore. But Stephanie would find out this was a total lie. Stephanie decided that she didn't want this man in her life and something had to be done about him. So she made herself a costume and became the spoiler. Stephanie would find out all of her father's plans and would place clues around Gotham to send Batman and Robin to Clue Master. The interesting part of this mission is that Robin, who was Tim Drake at this time, would actually find Stephanie and Spoiler would join Batman and Robin in taking down Clue Master. Stephanie had an instant crush on Robin, but Robin had a girlfriend in his civilian identity, so he couldn't exactly flirt back with Stephanie. It also really, really annoyed Stephanie to no end that Robin knew who she was, but she had no idea who he was. Clue Master would eventually break out of prison and Stephanie would be very, very quick to find out. But at this time, Stephanie's mother was in a really bad state. She was heavily depressed and addicted to painkillers. While out on patrol looking for her father, she would run into Robin. Robin was also going after Clue Master. So the two of them worked together and at the end of the night, Robin thanked Stephanie with a kiss. Stephanie would eventually be kidnapped by the Gully Carson gang. You see, Clue Master was actually working with the gang and gave up Stephanie as insurance to make sure that he would get his part of the cut. However, when the gang withheld his cut, he decided to contact Batman and Robin and be all like, no, they, they kidnapped Stephanie, I had nothing to do with this, they just kidnapped Stephanie and made me do plans for them. The duo would rescue Stephanie and she would join Batman and Robin in taking down the rest of the gang against Batman's wishes. She also flirted with Robin a lot, like a stupid amount. It was kind of adorable. It is worth mentioning that Stephanie would reveal her father's true intentions to Batman and Robin and the whole situation would be sorted out. Next, Stephanie would run into Robin when he was working with Green Arrow when the two of them were taking down a gang that was selling guns on the street. Stephanie's whole mindset here was, I like you Robin and I like being spoiler, so I'm going to become spoiler more often so I can see more of you. 
So she tagged along with Robin and Green Arrow. Now recently, there was a funeral for a classmate of both Stephanie and Robin's who had been shot by one of these gang members. It is worth saying that Stephanie didn't know that Robin was at the funeral in his civilian identity. But after the funeral, the two of them would meet up as Spoiler and Robin, and Stephanie basically said, look, I want to go after this gang, and you cannot stop me. The two of them had a much harder time in this mission than they foresaw, so Stephanie had to go home after being rescued by Batman. Eventually, Tim and his girlfriend Ariana would begin to drift apart from one another, but Tim and Stephanie got really close. Tim would break up with Ariana and begin dating Stephanie, but because of the whole Bat Family secret thing, Stephanie could not know that Robin was Tim Drake, so it was essentially spoiler dating Robin. Shortly after this, Stephanie would find out that she was pregnant from her ex-boyfriend who had recently left Gotham. Tim would create a secret civilian identity called Alvin Draper so he could be with Stephanie as much as possible in this really hard time. Teenage pregnancy is very much glamorized by TV and it's not a good thing. Stephanie understood and saw in her own parents' lives that you can't raise a life properly unless you've lived yourself. Tim would eventually be moved away from Gotham to Keystone City temporarily, but he would make sure that he was back in Gotham for the child's birth and to help Stephanie give it up for adoption. Next, Tim would go away for a while on a secret mission that was given to him by Batman, and while he was away, Batman would go to Stephanie. Batman basically said, look, you're not gonna quit this anytime soon. So I'm going to tell you Tim's real name, and you are going to have training from me and the Birds of Prey and Batgirl. Is that okay? And naturally, Stephanie jumped at this opportunity. Stephanie actually became really, really close with Cassandra Kane, who was Batgirl at this time, and it was a really nice relationship to see develop because it did last a number of years. However, Batman would eventually decide that Stephanie wasn't cut out to be a hero, but this did not stop her. Even though her training stopped, she would continue to go on patrol and go on dates with Tim now that she knew who he really was. Things would begin to spiral downwards for Stephanie when the US government would come to her home and tell her that her father had died while serving in the Suicide Squad. This sent Stephanie into this psychotic rampage and she would go through Gotham going after as much crime as possible. Eventually, she would hunt down the Riddler who her father used to work with, not to attack him or anything, but just to get an idea of who her father was. Eventually, she would make peace with her father's memory, calm down, and go back to teaming up with Robin. The next major thing to happen to Stephanie would actually be when Tim was forced to quit being Robin by his father. So, to try and cheer Tim up, she would pay him a visit after school, and she would see a female classmate flirting with Tim. Once again, Stephanie would assume that Tim was cheating on her and would be outraged, but this time she put her anger to use. She went home and made herself her own Robin costume and snuck into the Batcave and told Batman that he was going to accept her as the new Robin. Surprisingly, Batman actually accepted her and put her through several months of really intense training and would eventually join Batman out on the streets of Gotham and for a while would be a really viable replacement for Tim. But the one time that she disobeyed Batman's orders in the field, he fired her. He said that he couldn't trust her in the field, so he couldn't trust her with his life. And the last Robin that he couldn't trust died. Now by this point, you probably know that Stephanie wouldn't give up here. She would steal one of Batman's plans to take out the entire Gotham criminal underworld. Stephanie really didn't understand the plan and really didn't have all of her facts straight, so things quickly spiraled out of control. A gang war would take control of the entire city and Black Mask would kidnap Stephanie and would torture her to get information about Batman. Stephanie would escape from this torture and she would make her way to Leslie Tompkins' clinic, but she would die in a hospital bed with Batman by her side. It would actually be revealed later that Leslie Tompkins actually denied Stephanie treatment that could have potentially saved her. And this obviously angered Batman to no end. Leslie Tompkins did this to try and get Batman to see the violence that he causes in the hopes that he would give up his mantle. But this just edged him on even more. 
Batman would exile Leslie from the United States and would tell her that if she ever returned, she would be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. I think this shows that no one messes with Batman's Robins and gets away with it, regardless of how long they were Robin for. Later on, Spoiler would reappear in Gotham Underground, but no one knew who this Spoiler was, and this angered Tim to no end, especially because this Spoiler had blonde hair. Tim would eventually confront this new Spoiler, and it would turn out that Stephanie wasn't dead at all. Leslie Tompkins had just helped her fake her death, so the villains that tortured her wouldn't come after her anymore. She spent a year in Africa, and when she returned to the US, she had an assumed identity and would start going to the same school as Tim Drake. One night after Final Crisis, Stephanie and Cassandra Kane were battling a bunch of thugs, but then Cassandra would turn around in her Batgirl costume and would basically say, there's no Batman anymore, why do I have to wear this? And would take off her Batgirl costume. Seeing an opportunity and jumping at it, Stephanie would become Batgirl herself, and this caused Barbara Gordon to intervene because she really felt like Stephanie shouldn't be a crime fighter. She still vividly remembered the citywide gang war that Stephanie caused. But when a drug called Thrill was being passed around Gotham, Barbara and Stephanie would need each other to try and stop the drug trade. Stephanie would actually single-handedly defeat Scarecrow, who was manufacturing this drug, and this showed Barbara that Stephanie had the maturity and the responsibility to become Batgirl. Barbara would take a job at Stephanie's school just to make sure that she could stay in contact with Stephanie and would create Stephanie her own Batgirl costume to replace the old tired one. During her time as Batgirl, Stephanie had a series of small adventures that didn't exactly have any long-lasting effects, like going up against Livewire or confronting Batman and Robin, who at this point were Dick Grayson and Damian Wayne. It is worth saying that Stephanie and Damien didn't like each other whatsoever, but it is hinted that Damien had like a schoolyard crush on Stephanie, and that's kind of cute to think about. Now truth being told, Dick Grayson really didn't like Stephanie being Batgirl, but the way that she moved in the field and the way that she acted was very reminiscent of Barbara Gordon when she first started. Stephanie would eventually receive her own transportation called the Ricochet from Barbara that was actually a motorcycle based off the Bat Cycle. Next, Tim Drake would return to Gotham with proof that not only was Bruce Wayne still alive, he was lost in time. Now, on his travels around the world, Tim had attacked the League of Assassins multiple times, and this obviously angered Ra's al Ghul, so he would begin to attack everything that the Wayne family held dear. Tim would go to the Batcave to seek help from Dick Grayson, but instead of finding Dick as Batman, he would find Stephanie Brown as Batgirl. Together, they would protect possible targets from the League of Assassins, including Leslie Tompkins. After this, the adventure would go on, but it wouldn't necessarily involve Stephanie. What you need to take note of is that Tim Drake would use Bruce Wayne's will to stop Ra's al Ghul's plan from being a thing. It was really strategically done and really, really clever, and I have more information surrounding it in my History of Tim Drake video. Then, after the return of Bruce Wayne, Bruce would test Stephanie yet again, and it would end with his full approval, which is really nice. Then, for the remainder of the Batgirl series, Stephanie would be going up against the Order of the Scythe, and while she was against them, she would team up with Clarion the Witch Boy and go to Limbo Town, and she would also team up with Damian Wayne when he called her Fat Girl, and it was a really good read, but nothing really long-lasting or groundbreaking. And shortly after it ended, The New 52. Now, Stephanie hadn't been in a single issue of DC Comics since 2011 when the New 52 happened, but then in Batman number 28, it would be revealed that Stephanie was going to play a large role in Batman Eternal. Now, if you want to find out what goes on in Batman Eternal, read it on Comixology. It's that simple. You don't even need to leave your house to read it. Honestly, I have such high hopes for this series being good that I want all of you to read it. Also, I'm doing a weekly Batman Eternal recap, which could be a lot of fun to read along with, so please consider that as well. I really like Stephanie Brown. I'm so excited to see that she's back, especially because, judging by a lot of my comments, a lot of people didn't know she was a thing. Stephanie is such an important character that it's unreal to me that people still don't know who she is. That being said, I don't think she's been in any mass media yet. 
When it comes to writing Stephanie, I will admit I do struggle to write characters that don't have powers themselves, but I know I wouldn't write a romance storyline for her because it's been done. What I would like to see is a long lasting story where through a series of events, we see Stephanie become a very independent woman, not only in her hero life, but in her personal life. It's super effective! Okay guys, that is it for today. If you think I missed anything important about Stephanie Brown, please let me know in the comments down below. And also don't forget to thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more history. And also don't forget to like me on Facebook and follow me on Twitter. My name is Faust, this has been Exploring Comics, and it is super effective.